Hi, this is David from Electric Teaching, and we're continuing on with our quadratic formula. And let's immediately change the size of the window. Uh, this is just my preference here. I want to make sure it fits in the screen of the video recording. So what we're going to do right now is just change the 400 extra pixel room to a 300 extra pixel room. Let's run it to see how it looks and basically explain where we're going to go from here. Putting in any parabola right now. You can see we've got a nice graph, and uh, it, uh, we have 300 extra pixels. And if I hit the S, the S draws the symmetry line, and we show the display for the symmetry line um, equation. So right now, I'd like to add more. Let me put my window over here. Uh, for instance, let's immediately go into the vertex. Let's plant, uh, make sure it has the vertex. Here we go, and the x-intercepts on the screen down where we started displaying the instructions and the results where we did the font render and the blitting we're gonna basically easiest thing to do here is copy and paste copy and paste part of our our code that's working well this helps prevent typos and stuff so I'm copying the sim line and the sim line instructions going um, actually I'll just nudge down the selecting in instructions and here what we're going to do is paste in and change this to be um, vertex. So what we're going to do is do vertex for the variable and assign it font render. Right here we're going to change this from the x-intercept part to something else. So let's get inside the green quotes. Let's see The vertex is and I just thought about how I had it coded out perfectly above so I might have just copied that line for the print line but what we'll do is try to retype it right now the vertex is at parentheses okay here's where we're gonna end the quote and now we need to add in just like this says a string with the VX actually this is perfect stringing out the VX the vertex X coordinate we need to put a comma to, uh, excuse me, a plus sign to separate the next part of the instruction, which is simply putting in more text. In this case, uh, let's see, parentheses, number, comma, okay, uh, next number. So I'm going to end the quote, add in the str of the vy, and we have this global. We have this variable globalized, as I like to say, from above, so we know that'll work. We're going to add on to this string, basically, um, the end of it, which is just the parentheses, just the parentheses. So let's see how this reads. The vertex is at parentheses, comma, the number for VX looks like a comma, the string for VY, so the number for VY, and then the parentheses. And we'll leave, uh, let's change this color. Let's see. Let's make this color zero and we'll do RGB. So let's go to the next one. Let's go green 255 and leave the uh, blue RGB, the blue um, zero. So now we have uh, vertex, vari the variable vertex holding that the vertex is at the XY location. Let's change the blit to now say blit the vertex. Width plus 10 is perfect. We need to move down away from below the other lines that have been blitted. So looking here, we've blit at um, 45 as our last line. So give it 20 and then an extra 5 to kind of nudge it down a little more so that we can see separation between the instructions. So let's go 25 more than this. Let's go to 70. So 70 pixels down below the uh, top of the screen and we're going to blit the vertex. I'm going to leave the word instruct here because it's a variable I can just simply reassign as we've talked about before. And so I just need to change the basics of this to say uh, press the V key, we'll use the V key, to graph or in this case plot would be a better word, plot the vertex point. And let's delete the extra word here. All right, so it says select the V to select, excuse me, select V to plot the vertex point. A similar trick that we've done before, let's make the middle number, the green number, 200. So we have 255 dropping down to 200, making it a little bit darker for this. Just give it a little style points here. Um, let's go ahead and as we're doing this, since we're doing such a good job, instead of checking it, 
let's immediately put in the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts. So I'm going to, again, copy instructions that are working well. In fact, I'll copy the last ones I've done. So there we go from instruct splitting to the vertex. So we'll copy that, bring it down. So we have now um, x-intercepts, or the zeros. As I try to emphasize with my students, do you want to have three different words that you would know with that? X-intercepts, zeros, and um, roots. So let's say, uh, let's do these the x-i's. Let's do these the x-i-n-t's. We'll call that x-i-n-t. And we're going to have the text here say, um, I'll leave the paragraph there, excuse me. We'll have the text say that the x intercepts, use a dash there, intercepts are at, hopefully we have enough room in the screen, so I'll try to con condense my words here. Okay, in fact, we'll just do x intercepts at the x intercepts. Uh, let's make it complete. R at parentheses. What do we need here? We need the x1 that we globalized. I believe that was the name of it. So what we're going to do is put in x1 now comma now we need let's see right here comma the x-intercepts at x comma zero so what we want is zero for each one of these then the word actually continue on here the word and so the only the, the only part we've snuck in the middle of all this green text is the x1 number and we're going to do something similar over here and Let's see. Oh, we can probably continue on here with the parentheses. Parentheses. Okay. Um, let's get rid of the word and just to give more space. And just have space there. Or at this one. In fact, we'll put a little comma between. Nah, just simply. I'm sorry, I keep changing my not mind here. But we'll leave a little space here just to make sure we have some room on the screen to make this happen. Let's see, we want the x2 stringed number here. So I'm just going to substitute the string variable with x2. And then let's see, we want to close it with per comma 0, just like we did before. All right, I think that's it. There's nothing else except for the color. Uh, very similar to what we've done before. Let's make this 200. 200. Uh, oh, no, wait, new one. A new one here. So let's nudge over and make this one blue. 255. Five. All right. So now we have the words, the words, um, uh, the x intercepts are at x number, comma, zero, parentheses, another one, comma, zero, parentheses, and then at blue for our final part there. Uh, just make sure this ended correctly. I'm going to scroll over and got the extra parentheses in there. It looks good. <clears throat> All right. We've added a lot. Let's run it. We've added quite a bit here. So let's run this and see how this is looking. Okay, so run. Okay, and I'm just going to put in any equation here. So let's go a 1, 4, 1 like I've done before. Oh, I forgot to change the numbers for the next part. I forgot to change the numbers for the next part. So um, we need to nudge these down further. And so what happens is they overlapped and they're putting the same text right on top of each other. Everything else seems to be working appropriately. Hopefully you caught that mistake before I did. That's what I always hope that you're learning this alongside so that maybe you can catch these mistakes and fix them the way I'm, I've tried to fix them myself and show you how to fix them. All right, so we need 25 more than our last one. So let's see, we went 20. 45. There was a jump of 25 for the separate instruction. Up 25, so 70. Oh, first mistake right here. This should have been 95. 95. Um, let's actually nudge this a little bit further. Let's go 30 more. So let's go 75 off. So we're going to be 30 below our last instruction. Let's make this one 25 below our last instruction. So there's a little tightness between the similar instructions. Okay, same pattern, nudge this one 30, nudge this one 25, so that'll go to 155. Let's save and run, and I'll run the same or similar ones here, except for the color. Color didn't get registered. Let's fix that. I must have blew that somehow. RGB, this should have been blue. Um, oh, 
I got very excited in uh, testing this. I forgot to change all the text for this, so we've got a lot of work to do there. Uh, but n the actual Y displacement of the text seems to be working really well. So let's come back, and hopefully you again are fixing the mistakes that I am making. Uh, um, X-intercepts, let's see. You can see I had the X-intercepts identified, and then I didn't blit the X-intercepts. I blitted the vertex variable. So that was the first mistake okay, right there. And the next one is we forgot to change this to say from select uh, V to select, um, let's say, um, X to plot the X intercept. So I forgot to change the text here for the instruction. And I thought I got the color right. So let's stretch this out and double check the color here. Um, yeah, I got the color right here on the X intercept instruction, but forgot to make this one have that same 200 darker color in the right location. So I'm just going to quickly correct that just by editing the text. So now that it goes 255 blue, 255 darker blue for the x-intercept instruction. So let's run this. Uh, okay, again, let's throw in some numbers. I'm off the screen here, but it seems to be working. Oh, x-intercepts are so big that we cannot see them. We need to round these numbers. Let's do a little math coding. So let's close this. I'm actually going to close the shell and start a new shell so that you can see exactly uh, what I'm typing in. That'll help. Coming back up where we do our x-intercepts, and we have them um, right here printing right after this line on the shell. We need to reassign these puppies, these uh, variables. Let's do this. X1 is equal to, this is a function that's available in Python, not even just Pygame, but just Python. You can round values. You can round values. And if I go parentheses, it's going to tell me the instructions. One of the beautiful things Python tries to do is help the beginner by telling these instructions as we see. So let's see, I'm going to round x1 and assign it right back into x1. Let's give it two digits. That should be enough for display purposes. Same idea, x2 equal round x2 comma two digits, throwing it right back into itself. Uh, spacing here is not important. I could have left it like that. In fact, I actually like it a little bit more tight for my own personal preferences. Since it's going right back into its own its own variables that shouldn't be a problem and we should be able to get that to print nicely on the screen so over here in the window you can see i've got a uh, it's asking the question for the coefficients let's put in that one three one and wow we had just enough room with the 300 extra wow. okay so this seems to be working really well i haven't programmed in the v and x commands and I also need to set it up so that when I have a discriminant that is less than, a discriminant that is less than zero, we don't want to have this x-intercepts are printing anything. We want to have it displayed that the discriminant is less than zero and there's no x-intercepts. So in part nine, as we continue on with this series, I'm going to have the commands put in here and also an if statement to control whether or not we see this. Uh, the correct display of text here. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope you are enjoying my uh, quadratic parabola graphing lessons in Pygame and Python.